Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and in this video, I wanna talk about how to set up scoreboards in your job or in your company. And I also wanna talk about my concept of red days and green days. Now there's a famous quote that says, if you don't know the score, you can't win the game. And one of the biggest moments for me around scoreboards and the importance of creating a scoreboard uh, in your job or especially in your company is I remember Vern Harnish, the author of Scaling Up, uh, I was in uh, EO or the Entrepreneur's Organization, uh, and he came and gave a talk. And he said, hey, have you ever thought about this? Like, why do people get so passionate about sports? Right? It's this small uh, compartment of our life, but people are just raving fans. They'll buy the gear, they'll go to the games, they'll fly across the country, myself included, for Clemson football. Right? Like, go all through, jump through all these hoops to show up and care about a sport that's people that they don't know playing a game that has nothing to do with them. Right? And then, on, the, on a kind of in a similar way, why do people dedicate their lives to go into the Olympics? Right? They'll dedicate their lives to train for this. And unless you're like the highest caliber Olympian, you don't actually make any money. So you spend four years training for a medal, right? And that's because people are obsessed with scoreboards and people are obsessed with competition and things like that. But most, most importantly, like knowing the scores so that they can figure out how to win the game and how do we gamify things? Maybe you've heard of a, the concept of gamification and it's how do we gamify things so that we make them more interesting? And so the question that Vern asked and the question that I would ask you is how do you make business so fun that people care about it like they care about sports. And why, why do we just accept that? Like, oh, people care about sports, they get excited about that, but we can't make business in our day-to-day -day work, like what we're doing, what we're actually spending the majority of our lives and the majority of our time on, how come that's not fun? Or how come people aren't engaged the same way that they get engaged or get interested about their favorite team. And the reason is because you don't have a scoreboard. So what I wanna walk through in this video is why scoreboards are important, which I just talked about, the practical like next steps So how do you implement this and create a scoreboard. And then lastly, how do you embed this in the fabric of your company? So it's not just, hey, this thing that we have that no one looks at, but it's, it actually comes alive and people get in the game. So there's a great book around this. It's called The Four Disciplines of Execution. Highly, highly, highly recommend this book. It's one of my top books of all time. Um, but The Four Disciplines of Execution. And it talks about creating scoreboards and about this concept of leading versus lagging indicators. So leading indicators, controllables, lagging indicators, kind of the end result. So what I want to walk through right here is the four components of a good scoreboard. Number one, people can understand the score. Right? If, I, if I see the scoreboard and I don't understand the score, well then the scoreboard doesn't mean anything to me, right? So keep it simple, less is more. Think about game scoreboards, right? If you, whether it's football, baseball, uh, basketball, and probably baseball is the worst example of this because there's so many stats. But if you think about football, if you think about basketball, it's like you can glance at the scoreboard and you know the score. You know who's winning and who's losing. So keep it simple and people have to be able to glance at it and understand the score. Number two, are we winning or losing? So people should be able to glance at the scoreboard and within five seconds instantly tell, like, oh, we're winning or we're losing. And if they can't tell that, then chances are the scoreboard is too complicated and it's not doing its job, which is I can quickly look at it and say, oh man, we're winning, that's great. Or, oh shoot, we're losing and so I know that we need to improve, we need to pick it up or we're not gonna hit our end goals. Number three, a good scoreboard has where we're at and where we need to be. So this is kind of a trend line. So I'll give you an example. So one of the basic fundamental scoreboards is revenue uh, and profit trackers, right? And especially revenue trackers. So we have our revenue KPIs, which is how much sales did we make yesterday? How much revenue did we generate? And is that red or green, right? And then also where's the trend line? So, you know, if it's the 15th day of the month, well, here's where we should be and here's where we are. And so, you know, I might see red or green on a daily, or on a weekly or whatever, but if I don't have that context of here's where we're at and here's where we should be and I can't understand that, that within five seconds, well then I don't know the score and the scoreboard is not useful to me. And then lastly, and number four, is that the scoreboard is focused on leading indicators or controllables. So I've got another video on control the controllables uh, and also one on how to create KPIs and things like that. But I talk about leading versus lagging indicators. And again, this is a key concept in this book, but leading indicators are the things that I can control that lead to the results that I'm trying to get. So if you have a scoreboard that's just lagging results or lagging indicators, and I can't actually control that, then it doesn't matter that I understand the score, that I know that we're losing. If I don't feel like I can do anything about it, 
then I'm not gonna action the scoreboard. So you always wanna make sure that the scoreboard, I can actually control that, or I can do the behaviors that will lead to that. And so on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis, I know that I can impact the scoreboard. So those are the four components of a great scoreboard. Now the question I wanna ask you right now is do you have a scoreboard set up in your company? Yes or no, and if not, you need to do that right away after you watch this video. But then if you do, and this is the key question, I'd say the most important question is this, is does everyone on your team know whether or not they're winning or losing? Does everyone know whether they're winning the day, whether they're winning the week, whether they're winning the month, the quarter, the year, I mean, this just goes on and on. But are you, and this is really the the point that I'm getting to, is are you embedding this into the day to day? (laughs) So it's one thing to have a scoreboard and you're like, okay, perfect, this is a great scoreboard that we never look at, (laughs) right? Well then the scoreboard is worthless. So are you reviewing the scoreboard on daily huddles? on weekly meetings, on monthly strategic meetings, on quarterly offsites. Now I've got uh, another video on meeting rhythms and the meetings that you should have in your company. Well, if you don't have those meetings, then you can't cover this. And then if you do have those meetings and you're not covering this, then the scoreboard is not gonna come alive. And so that really leads me into the last point, which is how do you integrate this scoreboard so that people get in the game? right? So now all of a sudden this, this scoreboard is alive and well, it's the part of your day-to-day operations. So there's two things that you need to do here. Number one, every KPI should be green or red. Okay. This is, you do this daily, you do this weekly, you do this monthly. And so people know, and it's formatted correctly. You know, if you're using the spreadsheet, you can just format that. Whereas, Hey, we had a green day or we had a red day. We had a green week or we had a red week. We had a green month or we had a red month. So people instantly know. Now here's the benefit of this. is a lot of times as managers or leaders, you know that someone is underperforming, but they don't know that they're underperforming. (laughs) So if I know that you're underperforming, but you don't know, it's now my job to tell you that and also to hold you accountable. Well, that's extra work for me. So how do you flip that to where now all of a sudden it's only an individual? It's by giving them a scoreboard, giving them Uh, clear KPIs, and then letting them know what's green and what's red. So then when they show up on the daily huddle, when they show up on the weekly meeting, when they show up on the monthly meeting, they're saying, oh, I had a red day yesterday, or I had a green day yesterday. And so they know, and they can self-correct, and and, or they can come to me and say, hey, man, I'm having a tough month or a tough week, like a lot of red days. So what can you do? Like, how can we help fix this, right? Like, and we can problem solve and work on those issues. But if they don't know that they're winning or losing, then it's my job to tell them that and I don't wanna do that, right? So now all of a sudden you're building in this culture and this happens at self-publishing school where it's like, oh man, we had a green day yesterday. It's like people know whether they're winning or they're losing and every day they're focused on, hey, what can I do to get a green day today? Or what can I do to turn this around so that I can have a green week next week (laughs) or next month? or this month, right? And that brings me to the last thing, which is daily huddles. And I just think this is so fundamentally important. Again, check out the meetings video if you haven't already. Like I talk about daily huddles, why they're important, how to run them, uh, all those things, why we run them in Asana. Um, But this is important. And really this is where the rubber meets the road is on these daily huddles. And a part of that daily meeting is 15 minute meeting is reporting numbers. And everyone reports their number. So what number they're in charge of and whether or not it was green or red. Okay, and this is, this is the way that if you have a scoreboard, but you only look at it once a month, you only look at it once a quarter, well, guess what? There's no feedback loops. Like people aren't using this on the day-to-day to improve. So you gotta bring it to the daily huddle. So there you have it. That's why you should have a scoreboard if you don't have it in your business. There's how to create a scoreboard. So we talked about the four components of a great scoreboard. And then lastly, how do you embed this into the fabric of your company so that people get in the game? And maybe, just maybe, if you implement this, the people at your company will start to get almost, or maybe even as excited about, the day-to-day of winning the game as they do about their favorite sports team. And if we get anywhere on on that spectrum, it's gonna lead to more engaged employees, happier employees. People wanna feel like they're winning. They wanna feel like they're playing a game and we're showing them how they can win that game and that helps all boats rise in the company. So I'd love to hear from you. Comment below on this video. What are your key takeaways? Like, uh, you know, what were the main things that you took away from this video? Comment below or what are the most important scoreboards in your company? How do you set them up? What are the key numbers that you're tracking? Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Take a couple minutes right now. Comment below this video. I'll read and respond to every single comment. Um, So scroll below this video right now. Uh, Comment on this video. Click the like button and click the subscribe button uh, on this channel on YouTube or on the podcast. And I'll see you in the next video. Talk soon.